travel and tourism has been on the forefront to be affected not only in india but across the globe and many experts are of the opinion that it would be last to get activated again however there are many who have been first to take a journey and today we have a few brave hearts with us who are among the first few to embark on a flight or a train or make the journey or to and showing a green flag towards travel we are proud to introduce our all women panel today these ladies are of course globe trotters in true sense but they have also been our real time travelers during this complete pandemic phase so they are firm believers that distance means so little when someone means so much and hence we start the unexpected journey of travel again so let's start with miss jeevata i would uh, just um, introduce all the girls here ladies sitting with us Dr Jeevata Agnihotri she is the chief program officer with Avalon Information Systems she's from Mauritius and she has successfully got her son back from Bombay after 75 days wow. we have advocate Aparna Agarwal she is the founder of Green Tribe she has traveled in the first migrant uh, migrant train from Delhi to Chennai and successfully you know got to meet her newly wed husband <laughs> then we have ms divya kandelwal she is an it consultant with the uh, tata consultancy services she has come back to delhi to meet her family from pune and took the you know took the step forward to sit in the flight for her family and come back here safe and sound even when the elders are there at home with all the precautions and yes we saw her making pizzas for her family yesterday <laughs> then we have anandita chatterji who is the founder of travel chatter anandita has uh, traveled to 65 countries till date she is an ex unilever and uh, rent uh, one second <laughs> she is an ex unilever and wealth fund and she would be sharing her experiences on how does she feel to sit at home during this time when she has been you know cancelling bookings for i don't know so many countries that anandita will be telling us hi everyone so let's start with uh, jeevata i will uh, just tell you jeevata's little portfolio here dr jeevata agnihotri is an international development professional with 13 years experience in applying technology for sustainable development currently the chief program officer with avalon information systems she handles the program growth portfolio Jeevita holds a PhD in comparative literature from the Uni University of Michel de Montaigne from Bordeaux France. Jeevita on to you. What do you have to uh, just tell us about your experience and how was the aviation uh, treating you while you were busy getting your son back from Bombay? Thank you Ruma. Uh, hi everybody. So this travel to Mumbai on uh, last week, so it was uh, last Tuesday, was purely done uh, for personal reasons. Uh, I usually travel a lot for professional reasons because I, we kind of work uh, with countries across the globe to uh, implement innovations for sustainable development. So I'm always, uh, I mean, every two weeks I'm on the flight for Africa or for any other uh, other continent. So I'm like, I, you can give me any destination, and I can travel without any problem. This time to Mumbai, it was to bring back my boy, a ten-year-old boy who uh, had been to uh, Mumbai to his grandparents' place for his summer vacation, and uh, he just got stuck there because of the lockdown. And it was a, it was a trauma for the whole family because I had, uh, we had never been separated for more than two weeks. and now it was like over 75 days so it was getting very difficult and for me the the it, i had to bring him back any reason with for any medium and i i really wanted to try the train but my husband was a, not very for the train so we we desperately were waiting for the flight to to be you know to restart and it 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 was in fact it, it was supposed to restart i mean there was some news in the press that it was supposed to restart in the month of uh, april after the first lockdown completion so i had booked my ticket and it didn't happen so we rescheduled etc 
and then uh, the minister said okay it's opening in uh, in uh, you know uh, last week so i booked and uh, on sunday uh, and i was supposed to travel on tuesday on sunday they said maharashtra government said we are not ready to <laughs> for any domestic flights that was like uh, i was uh, <laughs> i was really depressed by that i was like okay well, it, it what was very depress uh, depressing was this contradictory orders coming from left right and it seemed that the passengers were really caught in this uh, seesaw of decision making and that was very frustrating uh and sunday night they said okay we'll allow 25 flights and i was like okay on monday morning uh, i got my cancellation message from indigo saying that your morning flight for tuesday has been cancelled because they had to review the the schedule etc but then we quickly uh book on spice jet but the biggest problem for me uh was not really traveling in this phase of covid so getting infected or whatever that was okay because i knew i was taking my precautions what was very innerving was the fact that there was no proper sop uh in terms of quarantining domestic travelers i was going to travel to mumbai but not leave the airport just pick my son and come back and even that they were like okay even if you land you you'd be quarantined home quarantine for 15 days so that was that could have totally defeated the purpose of my uh, going to mumbai and being with my son luckily end of uh, by the end of monday evening so the uh, the sop the guidelines for domestic travelers landing in mumbai was published so there was like really a relief and i could travel without any tension on uh, on on tuesday morning now traveling traveling experience uh i was very impressed by the way the whole uh, airport was organized a few first two days uh, of uh, of domestic flight so the airport was very uh, was very quite empty there was no crowd extremely clean uh since i did not have to do any checking so for me it was very very easy to just sail through the the gate so that was not a problem and even the arrangements with uh, regards to the kits etc to the safety kits provided to the passengers that that was uh, i mean i was quite impressed by the way it was organized um when i was going towards the gate i was impressed to see that even the shops were open i wasn't expecting that uh, the eateries were open so that was like quite nice and at certain point you would you wouldn't really feel the difference between a normal day and the no, the you know the, the the current circumstances so going to mumbai it was five jet no problem good flight nice landing so i i reached mumbai just quickly transition to departure and i was waiting for my son uh, my brother now was supposed to just drop my son at the airport i just bring him back to back home over there also very very empty it was very disheartening to see mumbai such a buzzing airport really like so empty and no life in it but well this is the this is the current circumstances um uh, while uh, going to mumbai so in delhi you could see a few coffee shops some eateries uh, before you would check in but in mumbai these facilities were not provided so no eateries uh, in the check in area all those were available for security so where you have your regular eating joints over there so both spice jet and indigo offered good uh, no uh, there was good reassurance in terms of security everything was clean and neat uh the only setback was to stay with a mask from morning till evening so this can be quite tough I many for the first time for me so that was tough from uh, 6 a.m. till uh, 10 p.m. by the time i came back home i had to wear the mask and also the shield provided uh, on the flight can be quite uh, you know uh, uh, uncomfortable but in normal circumstances we just say okay what matters really was to bring back my son so overall it was a good experience and very impressed by all the safety measures taken by the the airline Jeevita yeah. uh, sorry to interrupt you here but uh, i believe you were traveling just before lockdown also you were in uh, jamaica so yeah. while you were transiting coming back to india yeah. uh, how many airports you had to uh, went through and what was your experience then before lockdown yeah 
So yes, I was in Jamaica uh, two weeks before the lockdown in India. Uh, I uh, to come back from Kingston, so I did Kingston, Miami, Heathrow, and Delhi. Before leaving uh, Jamaica uh, in that week, the cases were increasing in India. So you know, I, I was a bit uh, a bit stressed for the travel. But then, uh, strangely, uh, be it in Miami or be it in, in Heathrow, I did not really see all those health or security measures specially taken for, taken for COVID. So that was a, a bit, I would do business as usual. The only difference was when I landed in, in Delhi, where we had that super long queue for, uh, you know, where they would just take your temperature. So that was the only difference. And of course, migration, uh, the immigration, they were like asking, uh, more questions than usual uh, in India. So the only difference was not in the two uh, international airports, but mostly in India, Rajiv. Okay, okay. So now, uh, I mean, I'll be coming back to you with the futuristic approach also. But for now, I think uh, it's very interesting to know that you've been traveling all over and you had no fear of COVID, but you were more concerned about SOP, which was coming in late. And uh, you felt very normal. I mean, I know you spent almost six hours or above in Mumbai airport. So was the food available easily or how one could have managed? And what was the movement of the crowd? I mean, were people very panicked or people were like quite compassionate towards each other and, you know, they could feel that, you oh, this is an essential time going on and we should be disappointed more disciplined yeah so i think yeah you just use the word crowd i think in the uh, era of covid and <laughs> all these travels thing essentially in airports you'll have to redefine crowd a bit it was a very very light one not the one that you're used to and i did not see any panic people were very comfortable uh, traveling there was no stress and very strangely even the staff of the, over there the security people were very very calm very helpful so yeah so in, in terms of the psyche of people, travelers, and also all the service providers within the airport, no comment on that. I mean, very, you could not, you did not really feel the stress. Um, just that there were very, very little passengers, even in the eating area, when we managed to go till there, people were not really experimenting and trying to eat for whatever reason. So even the eating area was very empty. So. I was there because I, I really wanted the coffee. Uh, so, uh, but before we kind of, while I was waiting for my son, there was of course no uh, eat tree open. So I had just carried a sandwich and I was okay because I was working and that was really least of my concern eating at that time. I was just waiting for the boy to come. <laughs> and what was your son's, uh, what was your son's uh, take on this journey? I mean, was he, uh, what was his uh, experience like? Uh, that was very funny because before uh, he was sent to the airport, he had been briefed about social distancing. He had been asked not to hug your mom when you see him because you have to respect <laughs> social distancing. So he just came in and say, okay, from like one meter away, he said, mama, this is social distancing. I said, shut up, just come and hug me. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so, I mean, I was a bit uh, worried that he'll not be comfortable with the mask because he also had to spend around four hours in the airport with me. But he just played the game. And I think all these kids are extremely sensitive and they are aware of what's happening. So that was not a tough thing. And even at the airport, I could see lots of adults coming back. Oh, I don't, I'm, I'm using the word coming back. Maybe that's a proper term uh, with kids. Uh, so they were all, I mean, it was like a normal thing. Normal. Okay. Thank you, Jivita. We'll be coming back, asking you some no. more questions about future. But uh, no. before that, we'll, I think, move on to now advocate Aparna Agarwal, who is also founder of Green Tribe. And uh, Ruma, can yeah. you uh, extend further? I will. I will just, uh, I just have a few words about Aparna. Aparna is a young advocate and a budding environmentalist. She is a travel enthusiast who has always, who is always up for new experiences and embraces the beauty of diverse customs and traditions. For her, traveling is an opportunity for self-development and feeling the wonders of nature in reality. She is the founder of Green Tribe, 
and Environment Conservation Agency. They raise concerns of environment pollution, push for seeking solutions for waste management, and participate in transforming our lifestyle towards a healthy, clean, and sustainable way of living. She believes that this pandemic has created a buzz for environment conscious living and hopes that people adapt healthy green lifestyles in the coming times. I have already uh, told everyone that uh, what was Aparna's uh, you know, reason to travel to Chennai from all the way uh, from Delhi to Chennai. So off to you, Aparna. Tell us. Very well, Ruma. Uh, so thank before, you. For Aparna, before you start, sorry. You know, Aparna took a train from Delhi to Chennai, right? Yes. Uh, it is not about travel is not only about air travel. It is sometimes about travel by train and other means also. And that's even before 25th of May, I think. When yeah, 15th, the, 15th of May. 15th of May. Yeah. So, so that was even more brave heart, I will say, where, you know, you're spending almost over 28 hours from Delhi to Chennai and that too during COVID and, you know, all kind of things. So over to you. Uh, yes, like uh, Rajiv Ji just highlighted, there was a lot of chaos and tension in the air when I was traveling. My family. So before you started traveling, did your family easily allow you to take this? Not business? at all. Not at all. Uh, for a week, my husband had to negotiate with uh, my father. Let her go. Let her go. Um, he had dinner till the last moment. He had kept telling him that the flights are not functioning and this is the only window of opportunity that she can make it here because the Tamil Nadu government had taken a very strong stand that they are not permitting any other trains or flights for uh, operation in the state since the number of cases were rising. Um, so this train journey was indeed very, very special to many weeping hearts. Uh, uh, we had to, I had to start uh, on the, I, I boarded my train on the New Delhi railway station from the Pahargan side and it was, uh, I had to walk about 700, 800 meters before the station and there was no coolie at all. What I call is Pyar Ka Basta. Mummy ne, Chachi ne, Mami ne, Mausi ne. Sab ne mera pura basta pyar se bhar diya tha. Beti, Maike se sasural ja rahi hai. So I had to, in total so, three bags with me. So a lot of things to eat, that means. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, North and, Indian ka pyar jo hai, wo peet se shiru hota hai. <laughs> totally, sir. And I, that actually uh, made my journey very fruitful also. But uh, whenever, when I had to stroll through that distance to go to the platform where I had to board that train, it was quite strenuous. You know, it used to give me strength to go even further. But I would like, yes, I can make it. I want to have all those goodies stocked inside the bag. It was, it was a very... Um, I couldn't get any outside help. There was no coolie at all. Uh, the elevators were, uh, there was social distancing on the stations. We had to, uh, uh, you know, uh, at a uh, distance of one, one meter, there was social distancing on the station. Markings, yeah. Yeah. And for my personal uh, uh, precaution, I was carrying a disinfectant. I had five liters of water with me, sir. <laughs> for drinking and uh, food was also uh, I got from home. My mother had packed for breakfast, dinner, lunch, you know, separate packets. All, all of that had added to weight to what I was carrying by myself in that train. But that train journey had a very special, very different, unique experience. Like people were extraordinarily compassionate. They had peace. They were taking that risk to reach their home. Like uh, uh, It was a sigh of relief us aam aadmi ke liye, jo sirf pe ji raha tha. Uh, us train journey mein sirf aur sirf logo ke uh, smile thi unke chehre par. There was no, nobody I saw anybody uh, fighting or you know cribbing over those small things. In fact, there was a time that I had fallen. Uh, I was uh, I was seated on the third berth uh, because my father and my husband were uh, having a uh, tiff on my travel. So I got the third birth only. I couldn't get any other birth and upgradation is not possible. I tried that as well. 
but uh, I, I was I had to travel in the third world, and I had fallen twice. Uh, though they were not uh, Delhiites, they were Tamilians. They still uh, they they consoled me. They wiped my tears just like my own, like I am their own, own daughter. It was very warm and very affectionate. And those twenty eight hours twisting and twirling in the pain of separation to meet my husband. Uh, I, I think I got wonderful company. If I didn't have uh, those people in my journey, this journey wouldn't have been like what it was. So 28 hours, did you get any tea, coffee or something uh, in train or it was just uh, you what you had from your home? No, so uh, in the morning, uh, we had these uh, uh, powdered uh, sachets which were being sold. Mm -hmm. There was very limited entry. Where pantry was also working. We could walk down to the pantry and uh, hygiene was being maintained uh, and social distancing also. Uh, so we used to do a morning chairs, you know, every morning. The first one morning we had, we would do chairs on coffee and tea respectively okay. and have start off, kickstart our morning. No, one so thing very positive. Please. Yeah, please, please go ahead. One thing very positive about us was there was a way forward approach. Like everybody was looking towards a brighter tomorrow. Good, good. So, so there's a, you know, while we are going through this lockdown and various issues, this is one train which didn't lost its way also. <laughs> as many <laughs> of us have. And it reached on time, I believe. <laughs> I guess sir. That is because the stations were lim limited. This was okay. a special train, uh, which otherwise takes 36 hours, but because it was not stopping on those minor stations, that's why it took only 28 hours. 28 hours, okay. Right, right. Okay. So, so were uh, you quarantined as well once uh, when you reached Chennai? Yes, after that um, emotionally fracturing journey of 28 hours where I was just wanting to you know, hug and meet my husband, uh, uh, the railway's authorities did not permit me to even have a conversation with him. And I was put to, uh, uh, there were two forms of quarantines. One was paid and one was free by the government. Uh, I opted for the hotel accommodation. It was by the Grand, by GRT, uh, in Tinagar. And we were not permitted in the hotel also to talk. There was a compulsory quarantine anybody had to go through. And uh, it was in a, 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 a family could also stay in one room, uh, like people who had traveled together. But <laughs> unfortunately, my husband hadn't traveled and I had traveled. So we were put in two different adjacent rooms. <laughs> so we were sharing the same roof, but there was a COVID ball in between us. Okay. <laughs> so good, good, good. So we will be coming back you again like uh, I mentioned to Jivita also where we'll be asking you some futuristic questions what your thoughts are about traveling in future and also right. we'll discuss uh, how do you think sustainability must play on right and, uh, now we'll move on to our next panelist uh, she's Miss Divya Khandelwal who's an IT professional so Ruma can you take over from here Divya is an IT professional with five years of software development experience. Currently, she's an employee of Tata Consultancy Services, working for Vanguard Investment Bank as a full stack Java developer. Divya, off to you. What is your experience and your story like? Uh, yeah. Hello, everyone. Good to hear both Jivita and Aparna's story. Well, uh, for me, it was, uh, I was traveling back from Pune to Delhi. Delhi is where my in-laws stay. Pune is where both me and my husband work. And uh, so this had happened uh, on the 25th. We had this thought that the flights would begin and this would give us a chance to get back to our home and where we could live with our near ones. And uh, so we thought we should try, but we did have it at the back of our mind the last time around when the lockdown was about to start that it would be unsafe for our elders back home. And we'd take a chance of, you know, being a possible carrier. And which is why we had not traveled and uh, last time around, but this time we thought a month later we should do it. And uh, we somehow got the tickets booked and it was a late night flight. This was, I think, uh, a one o'clock, a two o'clock flight, two o'clock in the morning flight. 
and uh, the first thing before booking the flight tickets we first checked if we would be able to get a cab back to the airport because we stay at one side of the city and the airport is at another end of the city so that was also another concern because ours was a late night flight so uh, we first looked up if there were cabs available to our uh, surprise there were no cab options available so we went out we got hold of an auto guy requested him he ditched us when we again went and found got help from the guards and everybody because uh, we wanted to somehow make this work so we found a guy and then we took his number and all of those things and then finally booked the auto and then uh, headed out we left about 3 hours before the flight hour before the flight take off time how many of us have ever traveled in autos to the airport it was my first <laughs> And that too for a late night flight. I mean, it was it was a crazy ride. But but did you guys decide to take a late night flight, or was it? Did you guys have a reason to take the last flight or something? So uh, no, we the the twenty fifth. We were a little anxious about the quarantine process. Maybe we would have to be quarantined in Delhi, and uh, we didn't want that. So we wanted to hear back from some people who were traveling early on. so uh, but we did get to know that delhi was a little flexible about its quarantine measures so which is why uh, we decided to take the flight we didn't want want to push it any further so we decided to leave that night uh, only and uh, so yeah uh, that's how we took the late night flight and uh, yeah so we left 3 hours before before the the take off time which generally isn't the case uh, for a domestic flight but uh, we did that and it seemed fit also because uh, there was quite a few uh, things that we had to do because the queues were longer and there were a lot of people not a lot of people well on the airport but things were slower than usual so uh, that was a little different which we did expect but uh, we had that so uh, things were slower we the security happened and then the the check in of the luggage happened and then we were given security uh, the safety kits like jivita mentioned uh, one with the safety shield and uh, a face shield uh, sanitizer and all those things and then uh, we did have a dinner and leave so we weren't really looking for any food joints at the airport but uh, again to our surprise there were quite a few uh, i think a couple of them were open at the pune airport there are a couple of them only at pune airport i mean it's airport <laughs> it is a very tiny airport but uh, yeah so even though it was a late night flight we did find i think a couple of joints were open and uh, yeah so everything went smoothly and uh, we got in and we were ready to board and uh, the, well the the flight was quite crowded again i i did not expect it to be that crowded that late night flight and with the kind of hysteria that surrounds current times i thought it wouldn't be as crowded but it was as crowded it was mostly packed actually and uh, yeah it was a two hour flight we 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 were told that it could get delayed but it left on time and uh, yeah we got to delhi uh, actually 10 15 minutes before the expected time and uh, yeah and then after we got a cab also again uh, back to our place in faridabad so, so okay. and there were no issues at borders or anywhere not really uh, we no. again we were told that probably delhi haryana would be sealed but there was no nothing no nothing at all. Like yeah so so obviously it seems like there's a lot of mis uh, information floating Correct. around and there are a lot of rumoring which is going around yeah. and that is creating more trouble for passengers than anything else yeah. so good we will again come back to you and we'll be asking you few more questions and now we move on to our founder of travel chatter miss andita anandita sorry <coughs> and i think you missed the train you just wanted to start something and you could not board the flight <laughs> right that's so busy cancelling uh, cancelling her flight <laughs> absolutely <laughs> so anandita chatterji she is the founder of travel chatter she is a travel influencer and is a and is a super passionate global uh, globe trotter and her adventure adventures have taken her to 65 countries till now she is usually called a live buyer and known to be a personal branding coach and a motivational speaker 
an ex Unilever, Wellspun, and Rento Kill, and has been featured in a lot of radio channels, has had her articles published in a lot of publications and newspapers and travel magazines, and of course, is she's the new budding digital aficionado of the current times. <laughs> Please share your story. Thank you so much, Ruma, for that introduction. Thank you, Rajiv. Hi, everyone. I think it was really touching and overwhelming hearing all your stories. And I totally relate with you all. So, as you know, I am the founder of Travel Chatter, a travel influencer now. And I have loved traveling since I was a little child. Since I think I was five or six years old, I've been traveling. And nothing, nothing brings more joy or happiness to me than traveling. And, you know, if I am not allowed to travel for whatever reason, I go berserk, you know, that's like, that's the main theme of my life. Because if I'm not able to travel, my brains don't function. So every three months, I have to take a break, be it a weekend getaway, be it exploring some place close by in the city, or be it another exotic location, but I just have to travel. So... After, of course, having been to 65 countries and I saw that, you know, when I'm traveling, it's not just how travel is helping me see more places, connect with more people, but it's about my love for travel comes from the fact that how travel has changed me as a person. Today, the person that I am is all because of the travels that I've had. Uh, be it travel has helped me become more fearless. It has helped me be more experimentative, be more reflective, be more creative at work. And after having been to 65 countries, I use those life lessons, which are the most important thing about travel. I use those life lessons on, in my day-to-day -day corporate life. And that has made a lot of a difference in the way my risk-taking appetite has gone up, the way I handle obstacles in life. Like we all know, travel helps us embrace any kind of disruption in life. And that's also a reason why we are able to deal with this pandemic now. So... Uh, you know, payback in life, there were of course obstacles as well where I have gone through a divorce. And I was obviously, you know, when you go through a divorce, it takes an emotional toll on you. But today, I know I have overcome all of that. I'm the happiest I could ever be. And I owe it all to the way I travel and the amount I travel. Because it just changes you and how. And you always look at the more positive side of everything. So yes, now... Um, as like Ruma was saying, I head, I head marketing, I was the chief marketing officer for Rentokit at VCI. Uh, I also have worked in companies like Unilever and Wellspun. But in the month of February, I quit my job. I actually quit my job in November and I had to serve three months notice period. Little did I know coronavirus would strike and the entire world would change. I had plans for the next six months. I was supposed to be in Dominican Republic as we speak. I was supposed to be in Jamaica in August. I have a trip planned to Mexico in November. Obviously, because I'm taking a break, I had my travels planned all throughout and obviously all the tickets have now been cancelled. But having said that, obviously, I am... Have, still you, have, you, have you received the refunds of... <laughs> yeah, so I have, got a, I have got a travel voucher. So they've all given me a credit and they've okay. said that I can use it in the next one year. But okay. these are all different airlines. One was Lufthansa, one was United. So all different airlines. So I'm hoping yeah. they're going to let me use it. Even later. <laughs> because, you know, now that this is the first time I have quit my full-time job to take travel chatter to the next level. You know, I want to now work only on travel chatter. And obviously... And, and travel chatter starts on a lockdown note. Absolutely, exactly. <laughs> that's the inception of travel chatter. But, but yeah, but that's the thing. You know, when you travel, you know that there are going to be unexpected situations. When you're in a country... You know, things don't go your way. At times you plan for this perfect sunny day and lots of adventure activities and it all gets cancelled. And you learn how to embrace the situation and move on. You know, you don't want to just sit and brood over that thing. So for me, that's how I'm dealing with the pandemic. I quit my job. Of course, had I known that this is going to happen, I probably wouldn't have quit my job right now. But I'm like, it's okay. I'm focusing on my mental well-being. I'm focusing on a lot of physical activities. I have two dogs at home who keep me really busy. And I think my dogs are the happiest, happiest guys right now that they're seeing me home for the first time for two months at a stretch when I haven't left home at all. So it's great for them. I also have my mother who's with me. So just like all your stories, my mom, and since I was supposed to travel for the next six months and focus on travel chatter, my mom came to visit me in Bombay and she's from Calcutta and she was going to stay with me for a month and go back to Calcutta. My father is right now alone in Calcutta and obviously she got stuck because domestic flights got bad. 
and since her, her travel date was on the 24th of March, now it's been two months, she's stuck with me in Bombay, which I am super happy about because I get to spend so much time with my mother, but my dad is all alone over there. You know, so obviously now that domestic flights have started, will I travel? Of course I will. Like I'm just waiting for things to normalize and I have to get my mother and my father together. So that's 70 years old, you don't really want them to be separate, you know. And of course I do understand that people have to take safety precautions, but given the fact that once things kind of normalize, will I travel? Of course I will, because that's my core. I can't, if, I can't breathe if I don't travel. And Nikita, once, if I interrupt you here, sorry. No. You know, they, off late, there's been a lot of uh, talk about uh, virtual travel. Right. I, I personally, being in the travel industry for now, I think 30 years or so, I mean, I personally feel that uh, it not only stimulates our, uh, you know, mind, body and soul, but it also, uh, you know, it rejuvenates your uh, all senses. Absolutely, yeah. And virtual is one way direction like what i want to show you you can see that so how do you relate between the two and how do you think that travel is going to continue is very important right so of course while right now is the new normal right the entire world has come to a standstill these are unprecedented times we have never and we had never expected we'll see a situation like this in our lifetime and hence everything is moving to the virtual platform but does that actually replace a face-to-face, -face, a human connection? No, I think nothing, nothing can replace an actual connection when you're there in front of that local, talking to that local, when you're at that particular place, the smells and sights of that country, the energy that the country imbibes, you know, it, I don't think that is ever possible in virtual. And of course, there are various ways to do this. And like I was saying, because of all the treasure trap of experiences that I'm sitting on and the million stories that I want to tell people. I really, really want to start inspiring people to travel more, to make their dreams come true, whatever their dreams might be, to make their, to chase their passion. And Travel Chatter is one such platform. Now when, of course, travel resumes, like I know 2020 has been a bad year. Uh, first coronavirus, then the migrant workers, then so many people losing their jobs, the protests, but you know, humanity will come back and it will only come back stronger. We are all in this together. Flights will resume, borders will open and the travel industry definitely will be booming again. Yes, having said that, like I said, we do have to take safety precautions. So going forward, when I have to again embark on my next adventure, yes, I will be using masks. I will be using all the, uh, the gloves and everything that I need to. I will probably you know, do a lot more road travel than taking public transport to start with. I will definitely want to support local economies and local businesses when I travel. So these are the kind of things that will change. I will definitely be a more responsible traveler because all of us, I think, are seeing the dire situation the entire world. Yeah. So, I, think, I think this is one area where, uh, you know, this pandem pandemic has uh, actually helped all of us to realize that how important nature is to us. And I think somewhere that uh, sustainability and uh, uh, using resources to the fullest is going to be very, very important in coming uh, times. Absolutely. And I think it, uh, anything happens, but this will bring a very matured uh, traveler out of all of us will be more inclined towards sustainability and uh, towards preservation right. of nature. Right, absolutely. And, and given the amount I love traveling, I think once things are normal, just like everyone else, I will definitely get back to traveling again. Like Nothing sure. can stop me from traveling as long as, of course, I'm being responsible and I'm being safe. Okay, so we will be opening up now question answer. So I think... Uh, we will have we have a lot of journalists from travel trade and lifestyle with us today and uh, we'll be unmuting all of them now uh, so if they have any questions they can come back to you but to start the uh, question answer session may I ask uh, all of all the panelists like how do you see like i know jivita used to travel a lot for her work so what's your take on uh, you know uh, jivita on uh, business travel which you used to do would you think that you will be continuing with it or you will delay it what is what is the story 
yeah uh, rajiv uh, to respond to this maybe i'll kind of take this you know uh, share the sake of my organization with regards to it because these were like professional travels that i was doing uh currently uh, whatever remote mis- uh, in country missions we had mm-hmm. to do whatever technical support we had to do all these uh, we are in negotiation with countries and discussion with countries right now to convert those into virtual uh, support for instance i was supposed to be in uh, senegal in the first week of april for a regional workshop uh, where i would be uh, uh, building the capacity of like around 17 countries of course that mission did not happen because of eventual reasons obvious reasons so uh, we just recently uh, converted that uh, activity into a two weeks virtual uh, uh, uh virtual training sessions with all the 17 countries so this is the approach that we're taking right now because uh, the organization is not comfortable in sending any one of the team members for for uh international trips in any case uh, lots of borders of of uh, close by no in in allowing international travels and those are like support is like quite urgent to be brought to those countries Personally, uh, now if I just see uh, till September, nothing is going to happen. I don't see any travel happening. But in any case, I am being asked maybe in the month of October, November to kind of travel. But most of my travels, in fact, happen in Africa, and uh, I know what the healthcare system is like. Very fragile. So I wouldn't really be comfortable to take any travel right now. Uh, no. Last I don't quarter, see myself doing it. But you are planning for last quarter. Maybe we'll just need to look at the status. Look at the situation. Uh, okay. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Uh, coming back to Aparna. Is Aparna there with us? Yeah, yeah. I'm right yeah. here. Okay. Yeah, Aparna, yeah. if you have to travel again and come back to Delhi, is a train good option or flight good option? <laughs> That's a tricky one. Well, uh, train would give me another experience, an on-ground uh, reality check. But definitely, I would uh, prefer the flight to you know shorten okay. the time span and okay. can okay. Yeah. Okay. But but you are okay to travel again. Yes, I think it's uh, every travel is an experience, really? and uh, we can have our own precautions, carry disinfectants, uh, work on your own immunity. Uh, why why do we have to blame just travel uh work on your own immunity yoga do breathing exercises regularly with the unfolding of uh, the lo- uh, lo- uh, unlockdown phase 1 uh, i think when we are going to move in the city itself uh, we have to start working on our own immunity in our homes okay uh, one more thing i believe uh, when you were in quarantine you did had a chat with the uh, hotel authorities on uh, you know environmental issues and sustainability yeah yeah so they were uh, actually giving us food in single use plastic and um, as a service pro- provider i believe uh, in this pandemic times we should not uh, provide uh, an opportunity in the coming times for you know a stack of single use plastic causing us more misery so i had pointed that out in media and very uh, gladly very positively the ceo had uh, told us that their, their alternative measure the banana leaf the uh, cutlery was the banana leaf cutlery was in was logged in production and they were getting it out very soon okay. they have an inventory of 138 okay. and uh, i was only one person in one room but there were rooms with who had four or five people quarantining together a family who had traveled together so we can imagine the amount of uh, plastic single use plastic they were generating in one day uh see me so you know big stakeholders like grd mm-hmm. to come forward and uh, set precedents clean precedents to uh, lead the way forward mm-hmm. good 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 so i think one thing is coming out very clear though we will all travel at some point or the other for sure depending on how the situation is happening around the world but i think there's a very uh, 
uh, educated and informed traveler which is coming out of all of us and which is more inclined towards sustainability so uh, i will now uh, you know we also heard from anindita that uh, she is already planning her travel again and uh, i'm sure uh, my other colleagues uh, from the trade fraternity have some questions so i like to open this uh, platform now to them to ask any questions which they have from the panelist or from us or whatever i mean the floor should be open now sure so uh, first of all i i can i i notice that they are very brave ladies around <laughs> what they have done is hats off to you i am here at home close in 75 uh, days i have not seen even my closest shop because i'm afraid to go <laughs> you know, i couldn't find any uh, i couldn't find any men who has traveled <laughs> <laughs> you're right you're right yeah. so mainly maybe for anandita it was a bit different because she 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 missed her flight or uh, she has not been able to travel because of the lockdown so she has to change her, her way of staying at home and get uh, uh mainly with her with her dogs and and family but for uh jivita arpana uh, i think that what i wanted to know from you is while you were traveling during this lockdown how was the mindset of the travelers i know that jivita said that people were not worried they were not looking for food so maybe they they had a purpose for traveling when you have a, you were concent, concentrated on your son so your son was more important than food the mindset of those people traveling at that time was completely different when they used to go on a normal day to the airport it is where even they have if they had had lunch before they will still feel hungry because they are at the airport they need to take a coffee at the airport or they want to have a a uh, something to eat at the airport so i i want to understand how was the mindset mainly for us who want to to send people again to the airport in the future jivita yeah <laughs> you're right uh, i think in at least when i was traveling and in in the first few weeks of travel i think we have more focused passengers a uh, traveler sorry we're just traveling with a specific mission in uh, in mind you want to just reach your destination and when you're traveling i mean in my case i mean eating or whatever was really least of my concern i just wanted to go to my son bring him back home and you just don't feel hungry uh but in any case uh to to answer to your question i feel that uh we are just using the airport right now as a way to transit to a different uh destination not really uh, enjoying whatever of uh, facilities it really offers and people do come i feel with this mindset of okay there is something going on here and there is this all this uh, disease virus going on so this is not this is not a priority what you need to do is just take the flight go and reach your destination this is how i feel i mean this is what i saw around me because i didn't see much people really sitting around and enjoying a A, you know a meal or whatever because they were also, just focused on the day jivita also let me add that jivita traveled on the day 2 when the flights had started in india yeah it was only second day so obviously essential travel was what was happening then but as we go forward i am sure that passengers will arrive they will be enjoying the flight in a way that it it will be a means of transport for some time to come it will not be that i have to have that particular shop serve very good sandwich or coffee i have to have coffee at the airport but uh, people will start traveling for sure and you cannot confine them to their houses forever virtual travel there's lot of talk which has been happening but i don't think that it is to the same extent as a uh, being at the place yourself you you have to have that travel 
happening <clears throat> it is it is going to defy the instinct of human nature if you don't let him travel even uh, you know uh, travel means by car to some place it can be by next could be by train or by plane or whatever but it will start in a phased manner for sure any any other question i mean we are here uh can i speak sure sure ma'am sure yeah. how about fine thanks i found it very interesting that um, you know each person had something very touching in their story yeah and it tells you that travel takes you out of yourself so very much so i think that uh, all of us uh, when we travel we kind of unlearn what we know you know and pick up new things so travel very much is going to happen and uh, it will take a little time that's about it so we just have to have a little patience maybe 2 months 3 months that's at max and then we can all you know do a shorter travel and then a bigger travel and we can take it forward from there sure sure ma'am really appreciate that yeah thank you ma'am thank you okay my next question goes to um, anandita is anandita there yes yes i am yeah, here okay anandita so tell us what's your what you're planning i mean when do you plan to start again i mean i know it is dependent upon various factors right now right but uh, in your mind when is the prospective of travel especially since you are looking at international travel right so so not really international travel i'm also open to do a lot of domestic travel i have done a lot of domestic travel in the past uh, but i do think people are going to be very reluctant to travel this year at least so for example while i am saying i still have my tickets booked to mexico in november and if things are better maybe i will travel but uh, for example my parents i will definitely not advise them to travel anywhere for the next 7 sure. to 8 months for sure because they are more vulnerable to getting the disease getting infected than i am but uh, but yeah i don't think till the end of the year general people will be very comfortable with traveling and like i said travel again will change a lot like for me i have you know done things like going to the amazon forest having piranhas going to meet mountain gorillas in the jungles of uganda trekking a glacier solo in argentina you know so i've done a lot of exotic things like this like my last trip was to costa rica where i went jumping off cliffs into waterfalls so maybe going forward why yes i will have to bring tone down that adventure in me and uh, you know be happier with uh, like i said very absolutely slow travel and supporting local economies and local businesses but travel will happen it will just take a while but it surely will happen and meanwhile i think you know for us as travel influencers even if we have a voice where we can reach out to 1% of people who are listening to us it's all about being positive i think that's the main game changer right now where you keep people motivated you keep people positive and hence i am now focusing a lot on creating content on travel chatter and instagram or on my website travelchatter.in where i'm telling people about what we could do right now in order to be able to move forward and in a positive way sure that's that's very nice if we have any other questions from our uh, uh, question for her yeah if i can yes, if you sure, allow sure. me please sure okay. yes uh I like the way you think uh, and I am like you I'm very positive about travel and Rajiv knows very well you we have been talking a lot these days now that uh, this destination where you were supposed to go has been really hit by covid-19 what is what are, are your your thinking or the way you see the let's say Mexico you know that Mexico has been uh nowadays every 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 hour where we hear so many people are dying so many people are infected etc so before covid you were going to mexico with another mindset and another way of seeing the destination and another way of looking at it now that you know that this has happened and in 3 months your first flight will be for mexico so how you will prepare yourself mentally to plan in that destination so 
again, like I said, when I, I definitely love traveling, but I won't be responsible. So I will definitely have to do a lot of homework and research to figure out whether it is good enough, safe enough for me to travel to Mexico in November. If not, I will probably go to some place in India because like I said, our economy, our economy, India itself needs a lot of boosting in terms of the travel right now. But yes, while a lot of people are dying in Mexico, Mexico also the infections have gone up. But similarly in India, also we have over 160,000 people infected. People are dying and as we all know in India, definitely the numbers are much higher. The tests could be a lot higher as far as population is concerned. We are probably not getting the exact figures even now. We don't know how much people are infected in the slums. Like look at domestic health in India, right? We are not allowing them to come to our houses. We don't know what's the situation over there. So just like how a lot of things are unknown, uncertain in India, it, the same thing applies to each and every country, including Mexico. So yes, I will do a lot of homework and research. And if I do think that it is safe enough, I can take my precautions. And like I said, I quit my job. So I do have time in hand. I don't have to go for 10 days and come back. I can probably stay in Mexico for a month and figure out my travel accordingly where I plan it in such a way so that I am responsible, I am safe, and I'm not doing any harm to the rest of the people around me. So, so yeah, so it's just about being positive. Great. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Jeevita, coming back to you. Hello. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Jivita, if you have to go back to Mauritius, <laughs> what is your take on that? I know it's emotional for you, but I think that's one country which is, I think, COVID-free right now. It is COVID-free. Right? I'm not sure the borders are open yet, but true, yeah. I really want to. I mean, I was, I, we were supposed to take uh, our summer vacation to Mauritius uh, this week. It was planned to be for June. So now, of course, it's whole plan has been aborted and my mom keeps on asking me when are you coming when are you coming and now I really do not have any answer because we just need we just need to see uh, Rajiv though the heart is saying go but, uh, <laughs> I know I caught you on the right note <laughs> August 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 we open August okay. Rajiv <laughs> August accordingly. yeah you know, as from yesterday, we have no lockdown. Eh? Everybody is okay. free. Uh, everybody is going around and everybody is going to to the park, to the seaside. There yeah. have been a lot of fire fireworks uh, last night because okay. everybody are happy. is happy and back yeah. to normal. Good. Yeah. Good. 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 So I think the hotel will, will be opening for local market. But okay. uh, I think in August, uh, the plane will start coming. So, I'm already planning to, to, to travel also. Okay. <laughs> Within Mauritius? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, with my car. First, I will go and have a round. Yeah. Of the island because I have forgotten many roads and places. <laughs> of 75. Days. Yeah. And then I will try to, okay. to leave Mauritius. Okay. So, Jivita, I think we are planning your winter holidays. Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> good, good, good. Okay. So, uh, any other questions from anybody? Can you unmute it? Where's my friend Grover? I don't know. question, I my brother. Where is Mr. Grover? Grover, you are on demand. Like this. Devendra, sir, where are you? Unmute I'm yourself. Yes. I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm yeah. unmuted. Uh, but Rajiv, uh, Prem, hi, thanks. Uh, but the fact remains that, you know, uh, I, we heard uh, the four uh, brave hearts, uh, but then these uh, people were perhaps traveling for either, uh, you know, by choice or by uh, some reason, uh, personal no, were, reason or for leisure. They were all traveling out of choice. Of course, the reasons were different. Emotional. Different on that. Yeah. And then perhaps uh, I, I have, uh, you know, uh, while attending a lot of uh, webinars and uh, those kind of uh, events, uh, uh, virtually, when we are talking about this, we have one, I uh, have always asked one question, which is, uh, the time has come wherein we have, the traveler has to really been uh, lured to travel rather than, you know, his preferences would be different uh, for traveling. Earlier, it was a casual travel or business travel or leisure travels or mice travel or weddings travel. Those kind of uh, issues were there. But then this time, it's going to be more cautious travel. Uh, 
you know, that it, it may take a bit of time. Maybe we are talking about 2021. Uh, now, we should uh, all try to understand that airlines are into heavy losses. They may try to open up uh, to you know minimize the losses or whatever the case may be. But then definitely choice of travel will matter quite a lot. Uh, we may have enthusiast travelers also uh, trying to you know move into different countries of the world. But then definitely uh, in the coming few months, I'll say maybe by next year, uh, travel would ease down. We are all positive. Things will improve but it will take a bit of time. We agree with you on that, totally. We have uh, Rohit also with us. No, I just want to, if I, wanna, if, I think it's fascinating to hear stories about this wonderful woman talking about travel. Do you think the time has come for the industry to curate travel in crisis packages? I don't think crisis packages is something which will uh, really want somebody to travel. But I think we need to create emotional connects for sure. Like, like I just mentioned, Mauritius probably is COVID free right now. So, so I mean, there are, there are other countries also which are opening up and they are clear in clear. So, so I think going further, uh, safety uh, issues will be checked. And I think travel trade needs to know about them. I think safety is going to be a big element and yeah. it's part of your going to be a part of your travel yeah. accessory, if you may call it now. Absolutely. Anurag, sir, we, uh, uh, you, you work a lot on uh, sustainability and environment issues. Mr. Anurag Yadav, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi. Yeah. So I think uh, it's your time now to further elaborate on, you know, certain areas of your dominance, I, if I may say. Uh, uh, one thing that I understand is that uh, there is a lot of talk of that virtual travel that you see things on your uh, online and get along with it. So it's there more of a majority today, which is fine. But travel is not going anywhere. It's a difficult uh, time, yes. But I'm sure in a month or two, maybe three, whatever, this is going to come back. And you know, like uh, talking of me personally, uh, like I travel is like many life. Of course, I have these sustainable studies going and writing on that also. But travel has been my uh, focus all the mm -hmm. while. In fact, um, before this thing began, like in the end of April, in the end of February and beginning of March, like I was in Brazil for the Rio Carnival. So hundreds of thousands of people out there, and I'm sure at that time this thing was happening. This COVID thing, it must have gone out there. If I can give an example, one day, uh, one of uh, our friends there, he called me up in the night on his hotel and said, my God, I'm having a very high fever. I said, kya I said, Kuch happy liya hoga. But that guy, he got so ill that he went to the hospital. And out there, I saw there were dozens of young people coming in, tourists, who were ill, but they were recovering in uh, 24 hours and going away. So I think this had started happening at that time. From there, in the first week of March, I came to London, where again a similar thing was happening. Fortunately, I was back in India on the 13th of uh, March, I think. And that was the first day, I think, when we started checking everybody very rigorously at the airport. airport. So it was a, a strange experience. It was the first time, like I noted, everybody was stuck out there and everybody was thinking patiently. And now just two months, which may happen. I missed two uh, sort of, you know, trips outside. I was to go to Paris in, in April, and then in May, I was to be in uh, Monaco. I mean, it's amazing how everything goes upsetting. And as long as travel is concerned, I'm not going to sort of keep myself back. <laughs> and not because the, like, uh, I have seen enough uh, salmon that I can afford to be a little reckless. But the point is that this is not going anywhere. But two things have happened which have been good. One is about the sustainability thing. There was a lot of hedonism going in travel. I mean, it had become little de la in, in, in a sense, by way of consumptive consumption and uh, this sort of uh, behavior. That is going to be checked very brutally. It has already been checked. And secondly, whether it is destinations, whether it is hotels, 
and the towns themselves. They are going to be very, very careful, not about their own health and things, but also about the environment. Because out of sheer majbooli, destinations and all these places are going to enforce this. I'm very happy for that. We also and have uh, just to add, just to add to what he's saying. Sure. Uh, I have been doing a lot of webinars and workshops right now for becoming influencers or for college students, etc. Where I am talking about how to become an influencer by pursuing your passion, or how to travel to so many countries while having a full-time job. And the kind of participation earlier, I was a little reluctant. I didn't know how much of participation I'll get because people are not looking at looking forward to traveling right now. But it's amazing the kind of enthusiasm and participation I'm getting from people across age groups for these webinars and workshops. When people are interested to know how to curate or how to plan traveling despite having a full-time job, how do they go about traveling after this pandemic, and about on the influencer space on travel blogging. So these workshops are all, the fact that I'm getting a lot of participation means <coughs> looking forward to traveling even now. Yeah, I'll be in touch with you. One more thing, uh, we have, uh, I think, Minakshi Gupta with us. Minakshi did some, uh, you know, research and came out with the kind of travel that will be happening. So we'd like to hear from her also if she's uh, able to hear me. Minakshi? I can, I, can I ask yeah, a question? Yeah, yeah, uh, sure, sure, sure. Hi, Rajiv. Uh, uh, How are you? Yes, I'm, uh, good to see you all of uh, uh, good to see all of you after a very very long time, and uh, I think Mr. Grover is also there. Hi, Rohit. Yes. We've yeah. already spoken. Yeah. How is everybody? So yeah, I want to ask you, Mr. Uh, Nangia, that yeah, uh, you know that we we've already yeah. done a, a done an event on sustainability and responsible tourism in Monaco uh, yes. last year. So uh, what do you think? Uh, you know, there are so many influencers also here right now with us, uh, all the wonderful ladies. And uh, they are pretty enthusiastic and positive about travel and not even fearing anything, which is really good. You know, that's how we'll go ahead. But I want to ask you that, you know, as a since you're taking care, care of so many destinations, so what do you think how responsible tourism should be, you know, promoted now, not just by a destination, but also uh, uh, from a uh, traveler's point of view? So, so in my, my vision, we were doing an educational program for uh, sustainability and protection of environment through one of our destinations. But now it is not about one destination or two places. It is about sustaining the humanity through uh, sustaining environment and sustainability. So, so I think going forward, this is part and parcel of each one of us. Exactly. And I think it will gain momentum like never before. I think year 2021 should be the international year of sustainability. Yeah, I, I just wanted to add one more thing. I mean, uh, as a founder of a magazine and we've been, you know, uh, traveling uh, so many beautiful destinations for a very, very long time. I feel that it's not about how many destinations you visit and the things you like. But since, you know, in these times, the difficult times, you must look at how you travel. You know, how responsible you are as a traveler when you visit a particular destination and as a human being as well. You know, we've come to, uh, to a certain point, which you is... Know, uh, lockdown, uh, lockdown has taught all of us, I think, one thing. Yeah. We really need bare minimum to survive. Exactly. Okay, we... We have been living with a lot of things. In last three months, we have not used even one of them. So, so I think I think the way forward is, it is not about shopping. It is not going to be about a uh, lot of material. It will be about experience and more of nature. Much of more of nature and again coming back more educated, more educated. Coming back basically to, conscious living is what yeah, uh, we must look at. Yeah. So yeah, perfect, perfect. Yeah. And I think well-being. So, yeah, I would like to add here, uh, as you journey. mentioned. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Minakshi, go ahead. Yeah, Minakshi, my question to you was: you yeah. had a very nice way of uh, telling us the new segments. You know, so I wanted to really know from you that how do you see new segments emerging in the Indian market? 
so i have been talking to my friends uh, my friends category comes from the age group of 18 to 60 so i've been traveling alone as well as uh, in the group with them i've been on treks so i've been on outdoor outdoor tours uh, in rural areas so what i presume the millennial is going to you know uh, going to Uh, take it forward in experiential travel and this experiences these experiences are going to be really you know the real experiences like i was hearing other day somebody wants to learn how to climb a coconut tree in <coughs> kerala and they are actually curating uh, you know uh, uh, programs where people can come and learn how to climb a coconut tree so experiences like learning an art or a language or to know about festivals so these things are going to take it uh, you know uh, it will be a buzz thing now wildlife tours is another thing which i am going to uh, see as uh, you know people are uh, not crowded there because see the monuments the adventure parks and all these places the touristy places is a big no now for at least for one year whether it is uh, domestic or whether it is uh, international Into. travel so these areas the rural tourism Uh, another thing which i am looking at it and another thing which i have been uh, talking to people in down south uh, people want to explore their own city so the walking tours and the heritage tours are going to be big thing because if those who don't want to travel out outside their city they would like to explore their own city and uh, you know getting up early in the morning doing whatever the walking tours or the heritage walk come back in the afternoon eat the local food and this is going to not only you know educate them more about their city this is also unwinding themselves so holiday will have to happen once a traveler is always a traveler they will not stop traveling so they will find new ways of traveling so they will have to see for example my 77 year old mother was asking me yesterday when will i get to travel again <laughs> <laughs> so 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 traveling will happen glamping is another thing which i am looking at because lot of states are coming up with high end tents where you know the nature enthusiasts nature lovers the photographers they all want to do uh, the photography and uh, you know be in the nature but they want to experience both the high lifestyle and the camping they want to be in the midst of nature the camping of high end pandas will be in thing mm-hmm. lot of states like rajasthan madhya pradesh they are already into it rajasthan you know the ranthambhor side jaisalmer side they are all building up the uh, high end uh, tents with self contained wash and bath everything is available there so this is these are the few things and another thing is the caravan tourism which i am uh, you know i have read about it lot of states are investing into it they are calling people for investment they want to explore more into caravan tourism they are identifying the various spots they are identifying various river banks or the motels where they can you know uh, replenish their uh, supplies the food supplies or they can stay at night or if they want to have a wash and change or whatever it is so caravan tourism and staycations are going to be something which is uh, happening soon mr sani rajat sani sir hi how are you good so i think you heard first hand on caravan tourism we were just talking few days back yes yes we were talking about caravan tourism caravan tourism is the future but uh, there is only one state in india which is madhya pradesh which has a caravan policy in fact uh, you know it's not very easy to just take a caravan and move around anywhere yeah you have to have designated spots where you can charge your vehicles where there is safety security so madhya pradesh is the only state uh, where in uh, this policy does exist and i'm sure uh, what you uh, said ma'am is the uh, right way and we were just discussing few days ago about this uh, caravan tourism i think it should take up yeah even the karnataka tourism is also karnataka state is also picking it up and they are open to investors and uh, they are seriously looking into it but madhya pradesh has a policy if you go to the Already, website yeah yeah yeah, yeah. on the similar lines paid, i think yeah. karnataka tourism and uh, goa is also starting uh, soon we were just discussing few days ago about this thing this is, looks like a future and i yeah. hope this picks up 
but one thing sir i want to point out i mean there was a talk of virtual travel i'm sorry i mean i beg to disagree with most of the people here virtual travel is good for learning but you can never replace it with actual travel yeah we are we are I saying mean, the same uh, rajat sir we are saying the same absolutely until and unless sir you can touch feel the place you can experience the place you yeah, we, no you i mean you can't you can't get an energy of a grand bazaar in istanbul unless you there and standing yeah, having a turkish tea or at lake como yeah, enjoying yeah. people passing walk so i think sir. actual travel is actual travel I think whatever virtual you know. tour is uh, for the current times to just dream about the place and uh, make your handouts and do all the homework about the places you aspire to travel to but yes you have to visit the places later i mean uh, You can just do your homework here, sitting at home with the virtual. I agree. Travel. I agree. It's, It's like agree. dream now, travel later. So yes, that. absolutely. Plan things right now. Yeah. Yes. Any? Okay, we'll be taking the last question if anybody has. I think Rohit wanted to ask something. Yeah, Rohit, please. Jungle Lodges has opened up their properties for uh, caravan halt points. Okay. good 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 so that's that's additional information that policy is already existing in karnataka too rohit call right yeah yeah, yeah rohit call hi 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 to all hi. you know it, it hi hi uh, you know it's all uh, great to hear uh, you know everyone is wanting to travel but you know uh, if you know if you see you know the states have already you know the quarantine measures in place and also internationally you know countries are looking at quarantine for uh, travelers in such a scenario how do you see you know uh, non essential uh, travel happening uh, because you know when you travel you want you know you don't want to be confined for 14 days you know in a room so obviously there are cost uh, uh, you know costing also there so uh, how how it is going to impact uh, no. uh, you know the travel in in the yeah. coming coming days rohit uh, like i mentioned earlier also that travel will start with essential like what we have seen that there were essential pressing issues for which most of the travel is happening currently but after this will be one joy ride like for example you may go out with your family on your own car in your own surrounding you go to a dinner or you go for a you know day out picnic or whatever on your own and once that confidence is built up then you will start traveling like to a closer destination from closer to regional to regional to long haul i mean today there is a fear psychosis in the mind of consumer let's not forget that and that fear psychosis will take we are looking at at least 3 to 6 months before you know it eradicates and that too depending upon how the situation evolves over a period of time so so i mean there's no quick fix i agree with you on that but it is not that we we have locked the door and we have lost the key <laughs> it will be back soon up in effect rajiv yeah. excuse me i have something to add and share with you sure. maybe maybe we we are thinking too much on the way of traveling as we used to do before because there are a lot of segment that has opened as you said on caravan tourism and i will share one project i'm working actually is on retirement uh, people from europe so i am negotiating with a hotel of 200 rooms i take the hotel on management and i'm selling a retirement package in europe or wherever it is for all those who are over 50 years old there are many people today who are fed up to work they may be, they may have 50 years 55 years 56 years not necessarily 60 years to retire but instead of doing a lockdown in europe or staying in europe they prefer to do a lockdown in mauritius by the beach by the seaside and they can buy for a one year package and stay in a hotel for one year and by doing so the government of mauritius has a law is when you can when you are retired you can retire at 50 or 55 in some countries in europe automatically you get a mauritian permit and residence to, to stay in mauritius 
So there's no issue of visa or two months or one month or whatever it is. So this is a segment because the hotels are empty. So a hotel of 200 rooms, how he will manage to wait for one year or one and a half year. So he better rent the hotel with me for five, six years. And I make it become not a retired house, but a beach resort uh, lifestyle or retired lifestyle. Sure, sure. So, so there are new innovations which are happening. People are thinking in different ways. And I think going forward, travel will continue and uh, hopefully sooner than later. On this, we will like to conclude this session today. I'd like to thank everybody who participated with us, especially our Braveheart panelists, Dr. Jivita, uh, Advocate Aparna, Ms. Divya Khandelwal, and Anandita. Thank you very much for being with us and all my colleagues and friends from Travel Fraternity. Thank you very much. And we'll be back with you soon. Thank you, Rajiv. Before, before thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just first thank you. from here, we have Aparna's poem right here. It wow. was written during her train journey from Delhi to Chennai. And uh, can we all just give her two minutes to, you know, recite Sure, 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 please, please. And uh, make us all feel happy about the situations we are all in. And yep. uh, giving us a hope that everything's going to be all fine. Sure. Aparna? Thank you, Ruma. Thank you, Rajiv. Uh, the title of the poem is uh, Khushiyon Ka Dabba. पहली बार जब विदा हुई मैं बारात की रौनक में बैंड बाजे की लहर ने और मेरे हीर ने उत्साह की झड़ी लगा दी कि जुदाई का दर्द सीने तक ना पहुंचा इस बार की विदाई में तन्हाई थी सड़कों पर सन्नाटा था भविष्य उम्मीद पर ही बंधा था दिल रोया लेकिन आंख ना भर आई सबके लाड ने भर दी झोली मेरी और भर दिया इरादों में बल की पर्वत भी लगे रसीला फल कड़ी धूप में चलती जाती कांधे के भार से हताश होकर खड़ी हो जाती पसीने में लतपत सिसकियां लेती मायके की याद में बिनासुर होती फिर रोशन हुई प्रेम की ज्योति त्याग दे आराम को बुझा दे व्यर्थ ख्याल को प्रज्वलित कर उस तेज को भसम करने कर हर चोट को मनोबल को ढाल तू बना ये तो सिर्फ समय की बात है समय तो चलता जाएगा दौड़ना तो हमें है जहां पिछहत्तर दिन निकल गए वहां 28 घंटे बाद मैं भी झंडा लहराऊंगी नया सवेरा आएगा जो खूब खुशियां लाएगा तू आगे बढ़ पहुंच तेरे साथ है लक्ष्य सबका एक है इरादा नेक है आंखों में उम्मीद भर कर हौसला बुलंद कर ये सब्र का इम्तिहान है ट्रेन में हम सब मेहमान है एक दूसरे से अनजान है हम सब ही आम हैं एक दूसरे के दुख दर्द से पहचान है जैसे जैसे समय की गिनती सीधे से उल्टी होती जाती बेचैनी कोलाहल मचा रही है थोड़ा सा और धैर्य रख सच होने वाला है घर वापसी का सपना ये जादू की गाड़ी खुशियों के डब्बे से जुड़ी कर रही है जादू भर रही है हर जख्म लगा रही है मरहम पोच रही है आंखों से आंसू और लौटा रही है हसी में मिठास महसूस किया सुख और चैन जैसे सूखे कुएं में बारिश का पानी बंजर जमीन पर लहलाती फसल फिर एक बार उगते सूरज के साथ हम सब दिल दिल गाएगा जब मिलेंगे नैन से नैन थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच तो वी आर डेफिनेटली क्लोजिंग दिस ऑन अ वेरी हैप्पी नोट एंड होप टू हैव ट्रेवल बैक सुनर देन लेटर And thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.